This is Graham from .easy coming to you with another video. Today we're actually going to be making a video based on one of the comments we recently received. We received a comment where they were asking what's the difference between setting up multiple versions of what of WordPress on a website. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be providing two different examples because this can be seen as two different things. You can set up WordPress multiple versions of it by doing it through a bunch of different folders and different subdomains or different names with each individual WordPress installation being different. So it is something that's very easy and simple to do. They're completely unique from each other, so they don't spread over. You can keep them completely isolated. You can also go the other option of it, which is to go ahead with what we've been kind of avoiding through most of these videos so far doing, which is that multi-site button whenever you go through the installation. Now, the reason we haven't been touching it so far and kind of straying you guys away from it is because it is much more complex and there are very few practical uses for it. Now, there are some uses for it and those ones are very clearly defined. It is very good for those and it does an excellent job of it. So we're going to be showing you the difference between the two, how they work, and also some examples of what would fall into one or the other. So with any kind of an installation, you want to first of all go into your account, log into Softaculous, and we'll be installing WordPress here. Now the first thing we're going to do is just select WordPress from the list of installations. And the first one we're going to be touching upon from the two is we're going to be doing separate installations of WordPress, meaning more than one folder, more than one location on the same server, but different sites. Now the reason for this is because this is the more common way of doing it. You can think of this as if you want to set up a website using WordPress, setting up a blog using WordPress, and using that as say like blog.example.com, whereas your main site is at example.com. So this is one way you can set it up. So what we'd first of all want to do is we'd want to go ahead and do the software setup. We're going to leave the protocol the same. We're going to leave choose domain name just as what we have here. For the directory, we're going to leave this blank because this is going to be our main site. We're going to leave the database to what it is. We're going to leave the table prefix to what it is. For the site name, we're actually going to be calling this just main site so that we can quickly differentiate them. We'll be calling this as WordPress main site. We're going to not be touching the multi-site. We're going to be enabling this a little later on just to show you what it is. For the administrator, we're just going to keep it something easy. And then for that, we'll leave that there. And then we're going to go ahead and install this. It's going to wait for it to finish installing. So this we can see very easy to simple to set up. This is our main site. We've now got it done. We're just waiting for it to finish the installation. And there we go. It's ready to be useful. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to get up the admin page up here so that we have that ready. And we're just going to sign into this one. And then we're going to be going back into our Dottie's control panel. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to home. Now, you can, of course, skip this next part. We're actually going to set up a subdomain just to separate them a bit and show you a little more what it's like. So if we go back to home, we want to go under domains, and we can go to where it says subdomains. For here, we're going to type in the word blog because we want this to be for our blog. The document root is going to tell us that this is the folder it's set up under is our blog one. We're going to go ahead and create and just setting it all up, as well as folders and everything. And there we go. We get the message saying that it's finished. Now we're going to click on the Go Back. We can see it's now on the list. There's the document root. You can even set up a redirect if you ever want to as well. I'm going to go back to Home now. And we're going to go down into Softaculous. And from here, we're going to go to Install WordPress. Now, one of the other things we've been not doing in our videos, because we've always been setting it up in the main one, is modifying this Choose Domain option. So what we're doing now is we're going down to the subdomain we created, which is blog.sampledomain.net. So we're going to select that one from the list. Directory, you can create anything you want. Now, we're actually going to leave this as the domain here of just blank. Now, the reason for that is because if we select blog.sampledomain.net, you remember from the previous screen, we had set everything to go under the blog folder. Because of this, it's automatically going to know that everything goes under the blog folder and set it up accordingly. If you set up something in this box for the directory, it will be at blog slash and then whatever one you set up. So it will set up an additional folder on top of it. So we're going to leave that where it is. We're going to not touch the database name, table prefix. We're going to call this one as blog site. And then we're going to say, WordPress site 2. Set up the username here. Set up the same password. 
and then we're going to go ahead with the installation. So this will install the second one here for us. So here we've got our dashboard for the first one. If we go to the main site here and visit the site, we're going to see that this shows this is our main site here. So we can make any changes we want within the dashboard. We can create a video, or any kind of like site or anything like that. Put anything you want, widgets, anything else here. You can even follow along with one of the videos that we've set up for how to build a site, for how to create this. And then what we're going to do here is we can see the second one is from a different location. So in this case here, it's going from blog.sampledomain.net. So you can see here, it's got the blog site versus this one is the main site. So they're two individual versions of WordPress. They are completely separate. If we make changes to one of the dashboards, it does not affect the other. They're both still on the same server so that if you actually go in, you can see them. You can go in through FTP and do this. We're just going to quickly go into the file manager because we're already in cPanel. It's a little easier to show it here. But if we go in here, if we can go to the public, underscore HTML. We see a whole bunch of different files here from different things we've set up for you guys. And we can see there's the blog folder for a subdomain. And we can see there's all the WordPress files for the main domain. So as you can see here, they are definitely on the same server. They are in different sections of the server, so they are independent of each other. And this is one way that you can very easily set up two different WordPress sites on the same domain. And you can make them completely separate. You can make them mimic each other. You can even set up a subdomain and redirect one to the other. But this is one way of handling the issue of if you want to have different WordPress sites set up under the same server, but different sites. Now, the other way we're going to be doing this, which we mentioned before, is going through and setting up the multi-site. Now, this is definitely a little more specific. So you're going to have a very specific site in mind if you want to use this. Now, Generally, the best example of this I can give is WordPress.com actually uses this to set up their own personal free blogs if you ever set one up through them. So they use that to set up multiple different accounts very easily. Another one that actually very often uses this is universities. And the reason a lot of universities choose to go with this route if they don't, of course, make their own sites from internally is that they can set up each faculty with their own section of WordPress within the master WordPress account. So the multi-site creates a new dashboard called the network panel. So what the network panel does is it gives a super administrator, so a master user, access to all the sites. Through that network panel, you can go ahead and you can install themes, you can install plugins, and through that, everyone whose site you set up underneath it gets access to those. Now, different to normal WordPress is those users cannot install plugins and cannot install themes on their own. They have to request for you to go through and do that and enable it on the network. So this is why it works well for any kind of a larger business or a larger site with a lot of different groups that you want separate, is you can very easily, as a network administrator or an IT person, go through and change it. If you're planning to have a large site as well, maybe it's informational based, you may think that this is a good way to do it. Very easily you can update WordPress because you can up do one update and it updates all the accounts. You can update one theme, it updates across all of them. You can update one plugin, it again goes through all of them. So it is very nice and easy to use that way. We're going to now show you how to set this up. So we're going to go into Softaculous just like normal. I'm going to go into the install. I'm going to set this one up under just a sample domain. We're going to set this up under a different folder. We're going to call it WPMU. And the reason for that is just that's the older naming convention because WordPress used to separate them prior to version 3, but now they're combined together. That's why we get this little check mark here. So we're going to leave the database name the same, name the prefix the same. We're going to call this WordPress MU. I'm going to say this is multi-site WordPress. Check mark the little box here. And then we're going to go down to here, set up our usual user, set up our additional password. We're going to go to install. And then we're going to wait for it to finish installing and setting up. Now, when you first go into this, you're going to notice it looks exactly the same as before. Not really any difference to it. And here we go. We're going to sign into it. And there we go. It looks similar to anything else. Now, there is one major difference, which if you're familiar with WordPress, you'll notice right away. There's two different items here, which normally you would only see one. 
Now where it says WordPress MU, it's got the visit site, edit site, just like normal. What this does is this will take you into the dashboard for this version of WordPress specifically for this site. The second one where it says My Sites, you'll see the network admin option here. We're going to go into the dashboard here to start out with because this is where it gets very different. Now right away you're going to see there are not many options on the left hand side. You're going to notice that you get a much different looking dashboard. So what we can do is, first of all, you would normally go into sites. If you go into sites, you'll see you have one site set up, and you can add additional sites. This is how you do it. Now, one thing very different about this is that each one is set up for a path, meaning this one is set up under WPMU. Our next site would be WPMU1, or we can make a WMU test, or anything like that. It will always have a second folder afterwards, so it does always create a different path name. So it is important to keep that in mind. Additionally, one thing to definitely watch out for is don't have all of the WordPress sites go back to just the domain name by itself because they will definitely clash and get lost, and only the main site will prevail. So it is important to make sure to keep the path names separate and separate them out. Now you will notice that you'll have the ability to install themes. You also have the ability to set up plugin, just like you normally would under WordPress. Now you get a different option here, which you'll see under the plugins. You'll also see it under the themes as well. If we go back into the themes and we see where it says network enable. Now you'll see there's an option for network enable or network disable. This option is used to allow any user, so any extra site you've set up, to use this. If you click on network enable, every other site on the account can now use this theme. If we select network disable, then they can no longer use the theme across the board. So this is how you would monitor and allow access to certain things and not other things. So it is very nice that way. You can even go in and change it yourself. You can install additional themes, and this way you can easily manage it across. So if anyone, if you're the administrator here for the network section and one of your users for the sites wants access to something, you'll have to set it up for them. So it does give you that section of control, which they can avoid. If you go into the settings, you can get a several other settings here. So you do get like welcome notices. So you can set up things for if a user sets it up, like how they get the username and the password and other things like that. So it is nice that you can set up all these things. Now what we're going to show you as well here is how a new site works. So if we go into add new, it's going to go ahead and ask us for the site name. So it says here it's got sampledomain.net slash WPMU, and then whatever you set it up under is going after that. So in this case here, we're going to call this test1, and then site title is just test1. You can ask you for the administrator address. The reason why is it actually doesn't let you create a username and password. It will actually randomly generate one just for security reasons. You, of course, as the administrator, can always go in and change it later on but it does actually email it out to someone. So we're just going to go ahead and type in admin at sampledomain.net. Type that in, at site, and it's going to say the site's created. So when we go into here now, we can see there's the two different ones. You can go into dashboard, you can go into deactivate. So you can actually control these a bit when you create additional sites. So we're just going to create a second as well now. And this one we're going to be calling test2. Be calling this test2, and then same address here. I'm going to add the site in as well. And now when we go to these, we'll see we've got the three sites. We've got the main site set up. We've got the two additional sites as well. So now when we go into themes, we can go to network enable, and it'll go ahead and enable that theme. We can now see this is switched to network disable. So this way we can go ahead and we can make any kind of a change we want and give access to whoever we want for it. We can also do the same thing for plugins. So we can go in and enable this one. Then what will happen then is if we go into the dashboard here, we can see we can go into anyone we want. So the network administrator, you will always have access to all the accounts. If you log in as just the username and a password for one of the accounts you've set up, they'll only have access to that one. So we're going to go into one of the test sites we set up, just to show you an example. So if we go into the dashboard for this one, and then we go into the plugins, you're going to see only the one plugin is set up. The other plugin is not. So this is one way that you as a network administrator have full control over it. Also, additionally, for the themes, you can see 
the theme is set up here and only the one available theme. Even though WordPress comes by default with two themes set up, we can see that because we've only allowed one, it only gives them access to one. So because of this, you can have it set up that way. Now, one of the reasons for this is typically when you have a site that you're going to want to set up with multi-site, you want to have the same themes access to everyone. Typically, you'll only be using one theme. You may differentiate a bit. So there's not really a need to have a large amount of themes. And even if you do want to, you can set it up. There's no problem, of course. And this way, you can make sure that everybody has access to the same content, the same tools, so there's no anybody's missing something they don't need. Everybody, by default, starting out, has everything they need. So it is very simple and easy to manage. The sites are completely independent of each other. So you can go ahead and you can make changes to one, and they will not appear on the other. Now, again, this is mainly used only for larger sites where you want content to be similar based, but you want users to ha be restricted so that they can only use their areas. Again, going back to the example we mentioned before with the university, as the IT department, you'd be setting up the site, setting up everything for them. You'd then be the super administrator. For the WordPress site, they'd have their regular administrator, which would be something like the dean of that specific group, let's say sciences in this case. And then the users for that specific group would be all the different professors. You then have the second site would be something like, say, the arts. And then you'd have the dean of the arts group there, and then all the different professors as well. This way, you've got the two different sites set up. They don't interfere with each other. The users can't get access to the other one. So everyone stays within their own area. They have access to all the different features and everything, just like before. So it is a nice way to set it up. And these are two different ways you can do it. Neither one is really superior to the other, as they both have specific features while they're set up. Now, for general usage, you're going to want to go with the first option we mentioned. It is easier to set up, it is easier to manage. And there's no real advantage on smaller sites to having the network administrator section set up. If you want to, you're more than welcome to, of course. It is your choice. For larger sites, it definitely becomes hasslesome to set up everything independently. And we definitely suggest to go with the multi-site, as it is a much better way to go. If you're doing things like add-on domains, it's up to you. You may want to set up the add-on domain and then do a redirect to the multi-site function and set it up that way. If you're going in with subdomains, you can do a similar faction as well. You can also do individual installations for each one as well. It's completely up to you. But this is one of the ways we thought we could answer the question to the comment that was asked of how to set up multiple versions of WordPress, as these are the different ways you can do it and some examples of how to set it up. If you have any questions or comments or any other things you want us to show on videos, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. You can also follow us on Twitter. You can like us on Facebook. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out more videos we'll have coming your way. Thank you.